Let's look at some of the common load balancing strategies in AWS. AWS has different types of load balancers, such as the network load balancer and application load balancer. Each operates at different layers of the network stack and serves different purposes. But before we dive into load balancers, let's refresh our memory on the OSI model layers using a traveling packet example. Imagine you're sending a message from your laptop to a website. Layer 7 is the application layer. This is your actual HTTP request, saying get slash API slash users. Layer 4 is the transport layer. This wraps your message in TCP packets with source and destination ports. Layer 3 is the network layer. This adds IP addresses like 192.168.1.100 to 10.0.0.5. And layer 1 is the physical layer. This converts everything into electrical signals traveling through cables. Load balancers operate at different layers depending on how much of this packet they can read and understand. Let's start with the network load balancer. It operates at layer four, which means it works with TCP and UDP traffic. It doesn't understand HTTP, it just forwards packets. This makes it incredibly fast, capable of handling millions of requests per second with ultra low latency perfect for gaming or real-time applications. However, the application load balancer operates at layer 7, which means it understands HTTP and HTTPS protocols. It can inspect the content of requests and route traffic based on URL paths, host headers, or even query parameters. This makes it perfect for microservices where different services handle different endpoints. So what does layer 7 really mean? It means the load balancer can read and understand your HTTP requests. It knows if you're requesting slash API slash users or slash API slash orders and can route accordingly. Layer 4 only sees raw TCP packets while layer 7 sees the actual application data. The next video will cover load balancer algorithms.